Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to start talking about some of the basic trigonometric identities and the three most basic ones are the ones here on the board. Probably want to narrow that down. This one right here is the best, well I shouldn't say best because best doesn't really mean anything, but it's probably the most useful trigonometric identity of all the identities that exist. And this one you definitely want to remember that the sine square of the angle theta plus the cosine square of the angle theta equals 1. Now the other two can be easily derived from this one, so you don't have to memorize those, you can easily derive those once you have this one. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But first we need to show you why that is true. Now remember that we define the cosine as the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which in this case the adjacent side is equal to the x value of that point on the unit circle and the hypotenuse is defined as being 1 on the unit circle because it's equal to the length of the radius of the circle so x divided by 1 is equal to x so the cosine of theta can be defined as x and so the sine of theta can be defined as y on the unit circle when you draw the triangle like this and you have the angle on the left side there on that corner. So we can then say that x is equal to the cosine of theta, y is equal to the sine of theta, and then you can see in this triangle, and again this is a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem, and we can say that x squared, this side squared, plus y squared, that side squared, equals the hypotenuse squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, and therefore since x is equal to the cosine and y is equal to the sine, we can say the cosine squared plus the sine squared of theta equals 1, and of course we can reverse them and write them like that. So that's why you can see using Pythagorean theorem that makes perfect sense and that was that particular identity is used a lot when you're manipulating the trigonometric functions. Now how do you get these other two? Well we start with the basic one the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta equals 1 and now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the cosine square of theta. And then here, the sine divided by the cosine, by definition, that's equal to the tangent. So that means that this is the tangent squared of theta, plus this is equal to 1. And 1 of the cosine is equal to the, is equal to the secant, so 1 of the cosine squared is equal to the secant squared. And then, of course, you can reverse this. You can write 1 plus the tangent squared of theta is equal to the secant squared of theta. And that's exactly that identity right there. So you can see you don't have to memorize that one, you can very quickly derive this one by taking our primary identity, sine square of theta plus the cosine square, square of theta equals 1, divide everything by the cosine square of theta, and you get this identity. And then if you divide everything by the sine square of theta, you should get this one. So let's check that out. So we have the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta is equal to 1, so we're going to define everything by the sine square of theta. And then you can see that here this is equal to 1 plus the cosine of the sine that's equal to the cotangent, and 1 over the sine is equal to the cosecant, so that's the cosecant square of theta. As you can see that this is exactly the same as what you have over there. Very easily derived once you start with this basic trig identity. So you can see why this is correct. Obviously, we use Pythagorean theorem, and then we can easily derive these two by simply taking that one, dividing both sides by the sine square of theta, or it's both sides by the cosine square of theta, to get the other two identities. So that gets you well on your way to seeing how we start with one identity and slowly use that to develop other identities. So we'll show you some more identities on the next videos to come.